It would all start at Beerus' temple, with Goku and Vegeta training under Whis's supervision, while Beerus rested on a beach chair watching them, very relaxed. That's enough, Whis would say, marking a stop sign with his staff. Both stopped instantly, only Goku would keep a strange expression. Aren't we going to train anymore? But we just started, Goku would say. You're a complete idiot, Kakarot, Vegeta said as he crossed his arms and looked to the side as usual. Today is Brawl's birthday, I can't miss it. Goku smiles naively. Let's just train a little more, Goku would ask with his familiar, graceful expression. Kakarot, you have to understand that not everything is training. We have responsibilities to take care of, Vegeta would say seriously after approaching Whis. Mr. Vegeta is right, Whis would say. Besides, both Mr. Beerus and I, we are very eager to taste the food of Earth once again. Remember, Miss Balma promised us all the pudding we wanted. Don't you remember what happened the last time they wouldn't let me eat pudding? Beerus would say with a threatening look. Goku would apologize while smiling and would approach Whis, while Beerus and Vegeta were waiting for him. Whis left on his trip to Earth. On the journey, Vegeta kept meditating while Goku looked at him doubtfully. Hey, Vegeta, you look really strange since you were named Beerus' successor, Goku would say, but Vegeta ignored him completely. A while back, at the end of the Tournament of Power, days after the victory of Universe 7, at the request of Xenosama, Daishinkin gathered all the gods and angels of the two universes. I thank you all for attending this meeting, Daishinkin received. The reason for this convocation is an idea that the great Xenosama had. I want each god of destruction to have his successor ready, yes? Xenosama would say. All the gods were surprised at such a request, except Universe 11. Great Xenosama, Universe 11 counts Tapo as my successor, who, under Margarita's draining, has mastered the Hokai to perfection, Vermood would say in a bow. It was precisely Mr. Tapo who inspired this idea to Xenosama, Daishinkin would say. I thought it prudent to have a backup for any eventuality, so from now on, each god of destruction should have a trained successor, and when he assumes his place, he should already be looking for his successor. My successor will be Vegeta, said Beerus, earning surprised looks from everyone. And what about this Goku guy? Don't you like him anymore? Champa insinuated with his familiar, mocking tone. It's not always about power, it's also about intelligence and responsibility. Vegeta defeated Dapo even though he was a god of destruction for a moment. Vegeta's a great candidate. I agree, Xenosama answers. At the end of the meeting, all the gods returned to their homes. Beerus was very serious after his announcement. I thought you wanted Goku to be your successor, Whis exclaimed. That position's too small for him, and you know it perfectly well. A year later, in the present. Our friends were at Balma's house celebrating the first birthday of her daughter, Bra, while Beerus and Whis enjoyed tasting the pudding for the first time. Vegeta was away from the party, thinking seriously about the responsibility of being a god of destruction. I started looking for the dragon spheres to become immortal, and without realizing it, I moved away from his goal. Now I reached the possibility of being a god, someone with many years ahead, Vegeta thought as he looked at Bra and imagined her in the future as an old woman, and him keeping the same appearance. I have an announcement for everyone, Whis raised his voice, gaining everyone's attention. Vegeta approached next to Whis, and Beerus with his arms crossed, showing his characteristic indifference. We want to let you know that Lord Beerus has chosen Vegeta as a successor to the God of Destruction, Whis would say. Everyone was shocked as the clapping began. Stop clapping, you damn insects, Vegeta shouted. On the other hand, Goku will be my successor, Whis pointed out. I'm what? Goku would say that he was not aware of anything. My Goku will be an angel? Chi-Chi said, fascinated and proud. How can this damn insect be an angel? It's a simple, low-class scion, Vegeta shouted, while Goku smiled in embarrassment. Mr. Whis, I can't be an angel if I don't even know what one does. Besides, it seems to be boring, Goku said, looking to avoid the posts they signed. Lord Beerus, is this some kind of joke? Vegeta said irritated, while Beerus sighed. 
I understand your anger, Vegeta, but Goku went through certain events to qualify him for that position, Beerus said. It's not only that, intervened Whis. Mr. Goku, even if he doesn't want it, has already started to transform into an angel. Whis began to relate some events in Goku's past. Just to begin with, he highlighted above all the power he achieved in a short mortal age. In adding more specific events, Mr. Goku, do you remember when you managed to counteract Mr. Hit's time jump? Whis reminded him. I remember, but I don't know what it has to do with being an angel, Goku answered without understanding what it was about. I guess you don't remember my ability to turn back time. While Vegeta became even more enraged, although he didn't say anything. Mr. Goku, intuitively, you can master that ability. You've done it for a few microseconds, but you haven't realized it. Not only that, the key is the Ultra Instinct. So that's what this is about, Vegeta shouted. His famous Ultra Instinct, Vegeta was saying as he expelled his key violently and retreated from there, not bearing to be overpowered by Goku again. Vegeta, Goku said sadly. Mr. Goku, I want to inform you that this is not your decision. You started an inevitable transmutation to be an angel. I guess the white color of your hair and the Ultra Instinct would clear any doubt. Meanwhile, we can see Zeno-sama conversing with Daishinkin. Great Zeno-sama, as you will see, Lord Goku was already notified that he will become an angel, Daishinkin said. I like that Goku is an angel, laughed Zeno-sama with a great innocence. Daishinkin invoked a big crystal ball where he was looking for moments of Goku's past. He observed when Beerus fought with Vegeta at Balma's birthday party, while Goku was watching the situation trying that the others can solve the problem without his intervention, but appearing at the last moment. That's the attitude of an angel, Daishinkin thought. He also observed when he delegated Gohan to defeat Cell, and when he let the kids fight Majin Buu, teaching them fusion but he especially paid close attention to the fight against Hit. As I mentioned to Wiz, even Goku didn't realize that he went back in time a few microseconds. Only one of the angels did it naturally without receiving any teaching, Daishinkin recalled. Minutes later, Wiz was training with Goku, who was trying to hit Wiz, but Wiz always dodged him without much effort. I'm surprised, Mr. Goku. After training for so long, you still don't understand, Wiz said while smiling. What is it that I have to understand? Goku asks without understanding, but he still didn't stop training. Beerus was next to the Oracle Fish watching Goku train. Oracle Fish, do you know where Vegeta is? Beerus asked very seriously. Of course I know. There's nothing the Oracle Fish doesn't know. He answers without saying where he is. I want you to go to talk to him. You have more time in this universe than me and Whis. I'm sure you can make him come to his senses, Beerus ordered. But Mr. Beerus, Vegeta would be very angry if I bother him in his solitude. You know how he is, said the Oracle Fish while he could see a hostile look from Beerus and how his key started to flow again. Are you questioning my orders? Beerus would say with a deep voice. The Oracle Fish didn't hesitate. Terrified, he used teleportation instantly to where Vegeta was. He was on a desert planet, very close to Beerus's planet. Wow, Vegeta, you've mastered interstellar travel. Now you can move smoothly through space without needing a ship, said the Oracle Fish, very nervous. Vegeta was sitting with his arms crossed, meditating as had become his habit lately. I know Beerus sent you to talk to me, Vegeta said seriously as the Oracle Fish went pale with fear. It's just that, Mr. Beerus... Never mind. Vegeta interrupts. I have to accept Goku as an angel if I want to be a god of destruction. After all, I need that vermin to make me stronger. I know you won't like what I'll say, but understand that in the future, Goku would be your master, taking Whis's place, said the Oracle Fish while Vegeta smiles. But he will also be my servant, Vegeta laughed. Vegeta returned to the Oracle Fish. Beerus and Whis were waiting for him, while Goku continued to train alone. There's something I don't understand, Vegeta said. Is something wrong, Mr. Vegeta? Whis asked, curious. Goku needed the help of six scions to be able to have the key of a god. I did it by myself. Why would he become an angel? Vegeta asked, although he didn't look spiteful. Whis let out that familiar, shrill laugh. 
Mr. Vegeta, no one discredits your achievements. It has been fascinating that someone managed to obtain the key of a god by his own means. It turns out that you did it by observing Goku. Although he needed help to achieve such a level, it was a new challenge for you that you were stimulated to overcome. This is not about who is stronger, but that each one fulfills his role here. Goku watched Vegeta and without delay approached him. Hey Vegeta, it's not for you to be like this. Believe me, I don't like this being an angel, Goku said dissatisfied. Shut your mouth, insect, Vegeta said with his arms crossed and dodging the look. There, Mr. Beerus, they look just like us, <laughs> Whis said with his shrill laughter. Daishinkin interrupted the conversation with a surprise appearance. Whis and Vegeta reacted in awe with a bow, while Whis made a lighter one. Hello, Goku said as usual. What a nice surprise. I didn't expect to find you, Mr. Goku and Mr. Vegeta here. This will be faster than I expected, Daishinkin said. How can we help you, Grandmaster? Whis asked cordially. The great Xenosama is very impatient to see the new successors of the Gods of Destruction, and he wants to see Lord Vegeta as soon as possible, Daishinkin said while snapping his fingers, and Vegeta's clothes changed from one moment to the next. He now wears the same outfit as Beerus. Vegeta, look at you! You're a god! Goku said as Vegeta blushed and looked to the side. For you too, Mr. Goku, Daishinkin said as he snapped his fingers and changed Goku's uniform to the same one the High Priest wore. But how am I supposed to train in this? Goku asked. You'll get used to it, Daishinkin replies. This is strange, Vegeta thought. It's not the uniform worn by an angel, it's the same one worn by the High Priest. If you don't mind, the great Xenosama would like to see you, Daishinkin said, and in a new snap of his fingers, he took Goku and Vegeta away. Whis, Beerus called very seriously. I noticed Goku received the uniform of the Supreme Priest, Whis answered, understanding the situation. Is Goku the omnipotent celestial angel of the prophecy? Beerus would ask himself, very worried. Wow, I never thought I could become an angel. I'm getting so powerful. They can't stop me, and I'll become much, much stronger. Ha <laughs> ha! I'll become almost invincible, Goku would say, very happy to become stronger and stronger. Goku and Vegeta would arrive along with Daishinkin at Xenosama's temple to see the king of everything. Hello, thank you for coming, Xenosama would say. Hello, little Xenosama, Goku greets casually and simply as Vegeta bows to the king of everything. We've brought you all this way to give you a little update on how things will be from now on, Daishinkin said, informing them of the new plans. We've decided that, given your potential abilities, a successor position would not be fair. Both Mr. Goku and Mr. Vegeta will be assigned to a new universe to be created by the great Xenosama, where they will be Angel and God of Destruction, explained Daishinkin. I only have one doubt, intervened Vegeta, gaining the serious looks of Xenosama and Daishinkin. I understand that every universe has a linked opposite, like Universe 6 and 7. How will that detail be resolved? Vegeta asked. Yes, how do we solve that? Xenosama would say. I thank you very much, Mr. Vegeta, for being someone so prudent, worthy of his position to take. We also evaluate to create another universe, where you will be the Universe 13 and the other the 14, where Tapa will occupy as God of Destruction. As for the Angel, we have some candidates, Daishinkin explained, but Vegeta did not look convinced. We are honored to be given these positions, Vegeta would say, but inside he was thinking, something strange is going on here. While Daishinkin was still talking with our friends, something strange was happening on Beerus's planet. Whis's staff would start to glow. Who's calling? Whis asked. I saw Gowis looking very worried. Good morning, Mr. Gowis. How can we help you? Whis says hello a little sympathetically. Something very worrying happened. Please come and get Goku and Vegeta, Gowis said. Whis looked at Beerus very serious, and he closed his eyes, fearing the prophecy he'd talked about a little while ago. Goku and Vegeta returned to Beerus's planet. We're here, Goku announced. We have to go immediately to Universe 10. Something has happened, Beerus ordered. 
Did something happen to old man Gawas? Asked Goku. Let's wait to see what happens. Until recently, he was fine, Whis explained. After a few hours, our friends arrived at Gawas's planet. Mr. Goku, Mr. Vegeta, Gawas said, surprised to see the uniforms of each one. Mr. Goku will become an angel, and Mr. Vegeta will become the new god of destruction, Whis explained. I see. Thank you for coming, Gawas said with a bow. I just hope this one isn't a waste of time, Beerus threatened. Gawas takes them to the temple where the time rings were kept. He opened the box to show them the rings. There was one gray ring, but six green ones. Since what happened with the Zamas, I checked the rings daily, and today I found this. Something happened that created another timeline, Gawas explained. We have to go to that reality and find out what happened, Goku proposed, determined. Wait, Gakarot, Vegeta stopped. Something's not right here. What's wrong, Vegeta? asked Goku. I find it very coincidental that another time ring was created just in our appointment on New Universe, especially the decision they made, explained Vegeta. Vegeta, do you think that little Xenosama and Daishinkin created a new ring? Goku said. Remember, Kakarot, Daishinkin always talks about the decisions in plural or by Xenosama. However, Xenosama didn't know anything about Universe 14, but Daishinkin said that both of them had it evaluated, Vegeta explained. Be careful, Wiz warned in a serious tone. The Supreme Priest is not someone to receive accusations of this kind. Then answer me something, Wiz. Where were Daishinkin and Xenosama when we fought Zamas? Vegeta asked. Enough, Wiz, Beerus interjected. We all know that Xenosama is manipulated by Daishinkin. Mr. Beerus, how dare you? Wiz would reply in annoyance, even though he knew Beerus was right. Wiz, can you hear me? He heard in his mind, the angel. Whis got nervous knowing that someone was telepathically communicating with him. Mr. Goku, I recommend you travel using the new ring, Whis expressed with a strange smile. Goku took the ring without hesitation, but Vegeta stopped him. Where do you think you're going? I'll go with you, insect, Vegeta ordered. Stay here, Vegeta, in case something happens. After all, we are always the ones who save the world, said Goku after putting on the ring and disappearing. But how rude! Shut your mouth, Vegeta would say. Do you mean me like that? Beerus threatened as his aura began to become visible. Kakarot is right. He may be an idiot, but he spoke a great truth. We are always the ones who have to save the world while the gods watch as if they don't care, Vegeta shouted. Please, gentlemen, it would not be wise to have this kind of discussion at a time like this, intervened Gawas, but no one paid any attention to him. Apologize if you don't want me to destroy you, said Beerus as he created a ball of energy of destruction in his hand, and when he realized, Vegeta hit him in the stomach, leaving him without air. I'm tired of you, Beerus, and your arrogance. Better stay quiet and do not bother, Vegeta said. Hukai! shouted Beerus, while everyone present was frightened. Vegeta's body was covered by the energy of destruction of Beerus, but he did not move. He raised his hand high, and the energy that enveloped him went to her. I managed to fight a Hukai before training for God of Destruction, and you dare to use those tricks on me? Vegeta smiled. Whis placed himself between the two of them, and they both instantly took care of it by holding their stomachs. And I couldn't even see it! Vegeta thought. They each received a punch and couldn't evade it. You both better calm down. The gods are forbidden to fight each other. On the other hand, we see Goku traveling to another timeline. He was on a beautiful planet, a forest full of trees and flowers, butterflies, and a glowing blue sky. Wow, this place looks like heaven, Goku said. You finally arrived. He heard a familiar voice when Goku turned and saw himself a replica of him, but with white hair and blue skin, just like the angels. Zamas! Goku shouted. He launched into his attack and rushed back on the way. He transformed into the blue Super Saiyan and punched him in the face. The Goku in front of him stood still. The blow meant nothing to him. Calm down, I know how you feel. I'm not Zamas, I'm Goku. The Goku from a future of yours in a thousand years said Goku from the future. Why was another time ring created and why am I here? Goku asked without letting down his guard. 
All this is because of us, or rather because of you. Daishinkin is your enemy, said the angel Goku. Now everything fits. Vegeta distrusted him from the beginning, Goku commented. Listen to me, I'm the omnipotent celestial angel, and it is your destiny to be so for the good of all universes. Omnipotent? wondered Goku. Daishinkin fears you because you have the ability to be more powerful than him. Although he is a powerful guy, he's not like us. He manipulates Xenosama to destroy everything that goes against his will, and he will do it until he discovers how to learn this gift of disappearing and creating, Angel Goku told him. Then come help us! I beg you, please! Goku asked. I can't. If I do, I won't give you the chance to become me. You have to fight Daishinkin. In a way, what happens to you won't affect me. But it doesn't seem fair to me that Daishinkin fulfills his task in another timeline. Your timeline belongs to a new one created by him, who for fear of you traveled to the future and discovered that I am the new king of everything for being the omnipotent celestial angel. That's why he told Xenosama to create a universe for you. He wants you to stop fighting and distract yourself from your destiny. But I'm far from his level. He didn't even reach Wiss's level, Goku said, dissatisfied. Don't worry, Angel Goku would say. Angel Goku placed his hand on the chest of his past. The whitish aura that surround him would now surround Goku of the present. What is this soothing feeling? Goku said. Don't worry, I'm just giving you some of my energy. It won't make you stronger, it will only help you to understand the absolute power, explained the angel Goku. And now, what do I have to do? Goku asked. The same as we have always done, trust you and fight. Goku returns to his timeline, but to his surprise, there was only Gauss. Where are the others? Goku asked, alarm. Mr. Goku, they left for the land of Universe 7. It seems that something is happening there, said Gauss. It can't be, would say Goku, attentive. Goku used his teleportation to travel to Earth. The gigantic key that does not stop growing shook him. Goku teleported back to that key that alarmed him, encountering Broly destroying an entire city. Hey, what are you doing? Goku shouted. Gokurat, just said Broly and launched into his attack began a fight in the sky, unprecedented. The impact of his blows generated shockwaves that shook on Earth, but Goku failed to keep up with Broly and fought as if he had infinite energy. Goku's transformed into the Super Saiyan God Phase 2. That's enough! Stop destroying everything! Goku would say as he launches himself against him. Goku, flying, released a kick that sent Broly straight to the ground, generating a colossal crater in the ground. Goku began to look around. This is a disaster! We will destroy everything! thought Goku. He placed his fingers on his forehead as if he was going to perform teleportation, but in reality he was looking for any trace to travel to another planet. It's perfect! Goku thought. As soon as Broly flew to the top, Goku holds him from behind, wrapping his arm around his neck, placing his fingers on his forehead, and performs teleportation. They arrived at a desert planet with a strange blue sandy soil and yellow sky. All right, here we can fight at ease, announced Goku to his opponent. Broly expelled a great beam of power from his mouth, which went straight to Goku. He tried to support it with his hands, but began to slide on the sand without being able to resist it. He avoids him a little above ground level and expels his key to the maximum. The speed with which Goku came out expelled began to decrease, but it was not enough. After some time, the blue of his hair darkened and became black. His arms were given and received the attack. After a big explosion, Goku was seen defeated on the ground, trying to get up, but without success. Broly came to meet him, grabbed his head with one hand, and began to oppress it. Goku screamed like a condemned, but his strength had not disappeared. I can't move, Goku thought. How can this happen if I'm going to do the omnipotent heavenly angel? At that moment, he remembered that pleasant sensation that left him the Goku of the future. A whitish aura began to surround his body, while Broly felt a great burning in his hand. Goku, when he let go, fell to his feet as if nothing had happened to him. He observed his hands with a very serious look. It was the Ultra Instinct trying to manifest itself. Whis told me that the Ultra Instinct was related to becoming an angel. Goku closed his eyes. 
He calmed down, and his hair turned white, just like in the fight against Jiren. Broly threw a punch at Goku, but Goku received it without meaning anything. I don't like to kill opponents, but you are an irrational being. Keeping you alive is a risk to others, said Goku, while he placed the palm of his hand on the stomach of his opponent and pierced him with a beam of power. Broly fell, agonizing, while a few seconds died. Whis appeared from the sky. Well done, Goku, Whis celebrated. Was this your idea? Goku said seriously. Actually, it was his idea. Now stay still and don't lose that state, Whis would say while placing his staff on Goku's forehead. Goku requires that state to be permanent, Whis would say, until a beam of light went through his stomach, being Daishinkin. Goku looked at his forehead and there was Daishinkin with his index finger stretched out. 